TV where we once again are playing Infamy Infamy and uh, the great news is we've got the first tranche of the rules back from the printer today and very nice they look indeed. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be playing a game with the Romans versus the Britons uh, in AD 54. So this is Caesar's force come to Britain facing uh, the uh, combined British tribes we're using the army lists out the book. Um, <coughs> we've taken minimum support actually in this game just to uh, try and uh, focus on the action. Uh, so we've taken the um, armies of the Britons, which is um, basically the combined British force there of warriors and noble warriors. And the uh, for the Romans, we've taken the Roman legionaries supported by um, Roman legionary recruits. And just to bring them up to the 120 points, we've added a group of Iberian Light Cavalry. So it's um, pretty minimalist forces for this game. Um, and we'll see how it plays out. What we've done is we've uh, set the table up, which we can see on the uh, overview from camera three here. Um, and we've got our deck ready. The Romans have got five leaders. The Britons have got four. And we have rolled for our false morale on both sides, so starting off on 10. So we are pretty much ready to go. So let us cut straight to the action and get into turn one. So we've got our cards ready. We've set our false morale and it's ready to go. So in we go with the first card. And we've got blue leader three. Now blue leader three is pick and mix who is a uh, commanding a British light cavalry. Well, he can deploy 15 inches from uh, either his deployment zone or the British ambush point. But he can't ambush. Well, interestingly, he's 22 inches, 21 inches away from the Roman uh, ambush point there. Had he been a bit closer, he could potentially have shut down both of those um, as he deployed out. But he can't do it, and pushing himself that far forward is inviting an ambush. So he's not going to deploy on the table at the moment. He's going to wait and see what the Romans are doing. Well, the Romans, they're going to come on. We've got uh, the Octio activated with his uh, group of legionary um, recruits. And they're going to come on, they have to come on by their deployment zone. Legionary troops uh, cannot use ambush points uh, unless they are lightly armed, um, specifically light trained light troops. So their deployment area is here and 24 inches by 6 inches. So they can deploy 6 inches from that. So these guys are looking to take the high ground up there. So away they go. They're coming on in open order. Uh, I don't think there's any threat of any ambushes coming at them that distance, so they're not going to go into close order or brace or anything like that. Oh, leader one now, which is the Centurion. Now, ideally, he really wants to get in front of those guys, so he's going to start moving around, uh, moving around their flank, hoping that he can take a more frontal of rule. Okay, leader two. Now, leader two is Geriatrix, who is the main British barbarian um, foot leader. And at this moment in time, he's going to keep his powder dry as well. The Britons are going to play a bit of a waiting game here, I think. Leader four for the Britons, blue leader four. That's their slingers. Well, I think they can afford to come out and start harassing. So they can deploy 12 inches in from uh, any of their ambush points. So let's uh, grab them. 
this point in time, anything the Britons can do to chip away at uh, Roman strength, and more to the point, harass them and annoy them, has got to be a good thing. So what they're going to do, they're actually uh, going to chuck a couple of Signa cards from their hand into the deck. So we'll put them in the discard pile, and they're going to darken the sky with those two Signa cards. Now that's going to allow them to hit on fours, which means they get three hits. The main uh, target is this one, uh, because had they chosen that well, they're, they're not in line of sight. But yeah, the main target is that one, so they split the first two hits, first two hits on them, and that's a man killed, which is great news for the slingers. And so is that. Ooh, that's a nasty start. <laughs> a nasty start for the Romans. Because being eight-man groups, they're just that bit more fragile than the ten-man barbarian groups. Blue Leader 1. Now, Blue Leader 1 is Streptococcus in his chariots. Now, he can come on 15 inches from his main ambush point or the deployment zone. So he could come on over here. What he wants to avoid is being ambushed from the, by Roman cavalry coming out of those woods. So he's actually going to zoom over in this direction. So let's go and get him. So there we have Streptococcus out with his chariots. He's got a, a range for missiles of nine inches, so he's outside that at the moment. Um, so next card out is Red 5. Now that's Iberian Light Cavalry. Uh, now they are allies of Rome, and they're going to deploy effectively to try and cover the flank of the Roman Legion. So these guys are heading down here. They're out of <coughs> range to attack Streptococcus. Uh, they could ambush, but these guys don't get any further, so they can't add anything more than that 12 inches. So they are simply going to deploy there for the moment. However, they are in missile range, and those six guys are going to uh, throw missiles. They're not going to dart in the sky. They've got three rounds of missiles, so I'm going to put that two next to them to show that they've used one, and they miss completely. So, uh, next one cut out, Tempest of Egypt. So, uh, that's the end of the first turn. Let's have a quick shuffle, and we will see uh, what happens when we come and start again. Let's split the deck. It's a blue signal. Followed by Blue Leader 3. Now, Blue Leader 3 is Pick and Mix, who has got the British Light Horse. Now, uh, he decided not to come on last time. This time, I think he's definitely going to arrive on the table. And what he's going to do is he's going to move in this direction and look to close down those, the first of those Roman ambush points. So he's moved within four. That shuts that down. There is potential for him to be ambushed from the woods here, but at least he's facing straight on to any enemy who's coming. There's, he's not leaving himself open for a flank attack. And what he's doing there is he's covering that flank there to stop uh, any Roman cavalry rushing out of those woods. Um, so... Red Leader 5. Well, Red Leader 5 is the supernumerary slingers who've done so well. Well, they've got one blue signal card out, and I think they're going to add another one from their hand to darken the skies again, because they're pretty enthusiastic about... Let's try rolling six dice. Well, they didn't need to darken the skies, but they did get three hits, so they're going to put the first two on these guys, and that's two points of shock. Um, which two fives, that's a great result for them. And they're going to put one hit on these guys. Unfortunately, that's a one, but they're being pretty effective. Uh, it's the kind of harassment that's going to be annoying the Romans. Red leader one. Now, that's our Roman main uh, leader of the, the Centurion, Centurion Costco. And he's going to advance 10 with his legionaries by playing a card to step out. He's only rolled two dice, though, rather than the three he could roll. Uh, sorry, 
yeah, he's uh, he's in tactical formation rather than march column, so that'll cost him two. But it's worth it because it allows him to move up and then deploy into line with his third um, movement dice, just being used simply to allow a doubling of frontage. Rather than measuring that, you, you simply you sacrifice a dice for formation change. You can double or half your frontage in any turn. So, uh, leader two is the Optio. Well, Optio's got an interesting job to do there. Um, he's going to use one command initiative to take that point off. And then he's going to activate his force to form up on the rear of that. Because they're within four inches, they can do that. It actually doesn't count as movement. It's simply a formation change. But uh, that's allowed them to get in to provide support because these recruits will be much better supporting than they would be fighting in the front rank. However, are the barbarians going to uh, do what they want and hit them frontally when they're up a hill? We'll have to see about that, won't we? Well, there we go. So, uh, leader blue two. Now, that is geriatrics. But Geriatrix has decided that he's going to keep his powder dry, which means he could be lurking, well, over there or in the woods, who knows. Red 3 is the Decurian Gratuitus Rictus, who is heading a force of noble Gallic cavalry. Well, they are very keen to get stuck in, um, and they're also very keen to get stuck into those British tribal cavalry. So let's go straight there and... Uh, they are going to use, well they've got a choice, they can use two Signa cards to ambush off this point and go straight into them. And I think that's what they will do because they're keen to display their hegemony over these pony mounted Britons. These are the cream of the Gallic nobility, uh, better armoured, better trained, better quality troops. And because they are impetuous, they automatically... Uh, go in with 10 dice. So we'll roll this. Now the Britons, the British tribal cavalry would normally be able to evade when charged, but because they're being ambushed, they can't do so. So they've got to stand and take it. So they get three sixes and two fives. Uh, and I do apologise, I failed to roll for the leader. So there we go, they've got three sixes and three fives. So we'll put that to one side. British tribal cavalry roll six dice. And with their leader, they get another two dice. So let's see what they do in response. Blimey. Well, they roll two sixes and a five. Well, we'll roll that first of all for our Gallic Cavalry. They save on fives and sixes. They manage one save. So we'll just put a token down there to show that they've got a man dead. And they will take two points of shock as a result of that. Uh, for the Britons... Uh, we will roll for their armour save, and because they are light, they will only save on a six, and they fail to do so. So the big question is, is it the leader? It's not. So they lose three guys. So what we're going to do is take two of them off and put down a, another token to show that somebody's dead. And they also take six shock, three from the fives and three for the unsaved kills, which means that they withdraw... Immediately, light cavalry will always withdraw after any round of combat in which they have shock. So they will withdraw 12 inches and they're not there. They don't have to go into the swamp. So they can pull off in that general direction. Taking their dead marker and shock with them. So, not a bad first punch-up for the Gallic Cavalry, who are obviously uh, sorry to see that they have got uh, um, uh, a man dead, but they do have two inches to follow up, which they, will, which they can always take, and so they will just reposition themselves slightly, so ready for the next turn. Uh, and that pushes them to within four inches of those slingers, so they must withdraw, they must withdraw, and they have to roll three dice to do so. So we are seeing that they are going 15 inches. Now that's a, that's a long run away. And for the Romans, it's an excellent use of cavalry to push those annoying skirmishers out the way. 
It will only be temporary, of course, but it has its effect. So Red Leader 4. Red Leader 4 are the Roman Sling as well. Now, with that gap created for them by the uh, Gallic Noble Cavalry, that, those things are going to come out there, nine inches from this uh, jump-off point, and they can start chucking rocks. Now, I've got a couple of choices here. Because nobody's within six inches, they can shoot at whoever they like. And I think um, putting more shock on those light cavalry would be a nice idea. Um, because that would kind of make sure they're never coming back. And they are hitting them in the rear. Not that you can... Uh, yeah, you can. They can drop to unarmoured. They've only got one hit. And uh, it has absolutely... Let's just check that because they are being hit in the rear. I have a feeling that that might be a point of shock, but it might not. No, that's a miss by two. So that was a little bit unlucky for them, but uh, there you go. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, next card out is a blue uh, Signa card, and that's leader one. Now that is um, Streptococcus, Streptococcus in his chariots. Now, he's not very impressed with um, the way things are shaping up. So what Streptococcus is gonna do is have a bit of a drive-by shoot. So he's gonna move past these guys. Uh, so he's rolled a four. So that will allow him to go 10 inches because he had six. And as he goes by, at any point in his turn, the warriors on board can throw their missiles and they are going to do so at uh, these guys here. Now, what we'll do is we'll put a little token down with two on it to show that they've used one of their three missiles. Each group will roll five dice. And uh, as they go by... And this also serves a dual purpose. Well, interestingly, they've got a whole load of hits. They've got six hits. Doing this serves a dual purpose. This is part of the theatre of Roman, uh, sorry, British uh, classical uh, heroic warfare. These are the leaders going out in their chariots, challenging the enemy. And in, when they throw javelins, they automatically raise their fervour because it's a display of enthusiasm. So uh, we've rolled a three for that, so both groups get a point of further. So we'll pop that on next to the chariots. But if they kill anybody with their javelins, that also adds a point of further to any British group on the table. So this is the way of encouraging the men in their armies um, to get their further up. At this point in time, the only men on the table are the guys in the chariots. But let's roll the dice and see what we get. Let's have a look at the armour class of these uh, Spanish, they're lightly armed. And on that, they don't kill anybody, but they do get two points of shock. Now, they're very close to those Spaniards, but the positive thing is for uh, the charioteers is that they always have an option to evade when the warriors are chariot mounted. So if anybody declares a charge, they have to give them the option of evading, first of all, and Tempest Fugit card. So we. We actually ran through the whole, de whole deck there, so everybody who was on the table was activated. Interesting turn, because um, the, uh, the Romans, who had been hemmed in fairly close, actually managed to push out and push the Britons away from them, and they really pushed their deployment round. So they're turning the table on its uh, axis almost. So let's see what happens next, because they're... Um, those Gallic Cavalry had one attack, but in a great position for launching another one with just one man down. Um, if they're uh, decurying their gratuitous rixes could rally off, you know, a couple of points. If he, if he gets a Signa card, which he has got in hand, but if what, another one comes out, he could well get them tip-top fighting performance straight away. Right, leader two. Now, that is the Optio. He's now a secondary commander in that uh, formation, so there's... Nothing for him to do. And a leader too. There's an interesting one. Geriatrix. Geriatrix is just going to leave it for now. He's keeping his uh, cards close to his chest. Literally. As well as metaphorically. So, um, there we go. Leader four for the Britons. That is their slingers. Well, we've seen them run off. And we've seen them run back. Because they've rolled 11. They're not going to get too close to those guys. But they can roll two dice and 
shoot without penalty. So they're going to roll six dice, fives and sixes. It's always fives and sixes for missiles, apart from when it isn't, which is pillar. Uh, pillar hit on a four. So they get three hits. Now let's see what damage they can do. And interestingly, they do two points of shock. Now that's really going to be important um, because doing two, uh, putting that shock up to four is um, is going to stop those Gallic cavalry operating with uh, absolute freedom. And funnily enough. Um, they have come up next with um, uh, Gratuitus Rictus. Now he's got options here. They've got two flags in hand. He could take that shock down to... He's going to do it. It's burning a lot of flags, but I think he's going to do it because he's going to use one command initiative of his own to take that shock down. And then he's going to use the two uh, Signa to take it right down to one. And he is going to uh, declare a charge towards uh, the skirmishers. And they, of course, have to evade. Uh, and they go a long way away. But because they've got another unit within two inches, he can change his target to them. And they, too, are going to evade. And they, too, are going to end up. Not quite as far away, but heading off in that direction. So the Romans are really bullying uh, these guys into action. Well, they rolled 10, <coughs> to which they have 4, but they take a shock off, so it's 13. So the Roman cavalry are really, the Gallic cavalry in Roman service, are really um, doing their stuff and letting the Britons know who's in charge. Um, Red Signa comes out. Drilled Roman troops uh, would be able to take that shock off now, but cavalry are not drilled, and they're not even Roman, they're Gallic. So another Signa comes out, and a blue Signa comes out, and Red Leader 1. Had we had another Signa, we'd have had a random, random event, but that is Red Leader 1. Now, he is going to... He's going to move down and look at, wow, 11, and look at continuing to push these cheeky barbarians off the table. So let's get that down. So he's got... Now what he is aware of is that there is a British ambush point over there. So in moving, he's taking care to ensure that the front of his unit runs across there. So any ambush coming out of there would have to hit him straight in the face, not, would not hit him on the flank. Um, and uh, that is his first activation. They've run down there, and he is now going to say, right, close ranks. So those guys are going to close ranks, and finally, um, with his third command initiative, he's going to get them to brace. There's nobody on the, uh, no enemy on foot on the table, but... He knows damn well that the Britons could be herring out of anywhere and catching him un unexpectedly. So he's making the most of the situation. Two Signa cards out. Red Leader 4. Red Leader 4 is uh, Roman supernumerary slingers. Well, they are no good for close combat. However, what they can do is move with 3d6. And they're going to do it because what they're doing is they're shutting down that Roman ambush point. By being there, they've shut that down. So that, more than anything, has protected the flank of the main Roman force. So once again, the Romans are really bullying these Britons here and dominating the battlefield. I think Streptococcus might be thinking uh, now is not a good day for uh, Britannia. But we'll see because his card has now come out. Well, what he's going to do, uh, he's going to attack missiles because uh, these cavalry are a nasty threat to chariots. So he's before he moves, he's going to get both groups to throw missiles and uh, we are going to then get a token and put that down that says one uh, to show they've got one round of ammunition left. And he gets four hits on those guys, so let's roll the dice and see what the effect is. Well, he kills somebody. Uh, so let's find a token 
to illustrate that. I have some nice skulls here from Charlie Foxtrot models which are, uh, are perfect for, show, for disp a gratuitous display of death. Um, so he got uh, one six and two fives, so another two points of shock on them which means that they are going to pull off a couple of inches because they've got more shock than men and they don't like that. However, now um, Streptococcus is uh, actually going to Ooh, what's he going to do here? Um, Streptococcus is going to move 2d6 plus 6 which allows him to go 15 inches and what he's actually going to do, he's going to go, the chariots are going to go herring off to that distance. But, but as they go, Streptococcus is going to drop off his noble warriors, uh, and himself in fact, uh, in that position there. Ready, I think they'll go slightly further forward than that actually. So they can be dropped off at any point, and this is the point where he is dropping off. They've, you remember, got one point of shock, but they also, so one point further, but they also have another roll because they threw uh, javelins, and that therefore goes up to three. They didn't, oh, they did kill somebody, so they can apply that point of further to somebody else, and Streptococcus feels that he deserves it. So he's putting that on the group that he's with. So, we can see lots of speed, lots of tactical flexibility. They've now got these chariots as rallying points to their rear, so if they're getting problems, they can jump on that and clear it off. Um, so, let's see what the next card is. Next card is Tempest for Egypt. Right, well, who hasn't been activated? On the Roman side, pretty much everybody. Um, on the British side, their British cavalry, uh, light cavalry, haven't been activated. So what we're going to do is get over there and move them. And I think they're going to be running away largely. Let's see how far they go. Well, they really are fleeing because they go 18 inches. Okay, quick shuffle and away we go. Um, Centurion Costco. Um, right, where's my tape measure? I'm over there when I was moving those cavalry. Right, Centurion Costco. Well, what's he going to do? He's, he's in close formation. He was braced. Let's take the brace off because you don't keep it if you move. And he's going to move. What he's going to do, he's going to move in close order. So he rolls six and a two. That's eight inches. But it isn't. Because he's in close order, he takes the lower dice off. Nevertheless, he is able to move six inches and the close order formation wheels round to face the British uh, nobles. So that's him. Red Signa card, blue Signa card and Red Leader 5. Now Red Leader 5 is our Italian Light Cavalry. Well, they're not in a good way, so their leader is actually going to pick up that signal and he's going to take three points of shock off there. What you'll see here is that uh, they very cleverly anchored their flank on some pretty grotty terrain, which is going to, uh, well, certainly delay cavalry if they're going to go through it. Um, and it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look good for them. Uh, so we've got a um, red signal card followed by another red signal card, followed by a blue signal card. If this, no, it's not. It's not a random event. So we've got blue three. Blue three is pick and mix. Who's actually going to take both of those signal cards and use that to rally off four points of shock, which gets them, well, they're at 50% strength. They're never going to be looking great, but it does get them looking better than they were. Red leader three. <coughs> Red leader three is Gratuitus Rictus, who is going to gallop up that hill 
uh, towards those skirmishers to drive them off because he doesn't want them chucking rocks. So he's going to ask them very kindly if they'd like to uh, evade, and they will say yes. However, they've only evaded seven. Nevertheless, I think it's going to be enough. And they're going to run into the woods. Uh, which, if they are pursued, will slow down the uh, cavalry. So those cavalry, they can't change their target, so they're going to go straight after that. However, they only roll three. They add four to that, but they take one off a shot, which he can take off anyway. So we'll take that off now. And they just go forward six. Seven. But I think they feel that they've uh, they've had a good day at the office there. Um, right, and that's another Signa card and a blue Signa card. And blue leader four. Now blue leader four are those slingers who've just uh, been chased off. Now, they're in woods, so let's have a look how that affects their movement. So we've got skirmish troops, they're reduced to 2d6 in that, so they will move around to come in on the flank of the main noble force with a view to popping out the front next time. The great thing for them is that if they're operating within 6 inches of um, warriors, they can always automatically fall back behind them as uh, treat, treating them as a rallying point. So if those cavalry came in to attack them, they would just fall back behind that, the, um, the warriors. Okay, so next card out is a red Cigna. So there's plenty of Cigna on display. Blue 2. Now, Blue 2 is geriatrics. No, he's pretty cool where he is, I think. He's pretty cool where he is. How many Cigna cards has he got left? Well, they've got three. I'm just working out where he is. Okay, well, I think it is time for Geriatrix to uh, reveal himself. And in doing so, he is going to uh, deploy and use a Signa card to raise further. Because his ambush point has been shut down by those slingers, he can't ambush. He can't ambush from his deployment zone, so he can only deploy onto the table. He can deploy within four inches of the enemy. So there he is deploying, and he is using a... Signa card to assist in raising fervor, so he gets a plus one. Well, it didn't do him much good. Uh, so the fervor on all three of those groups just goes up to one. But I think it changes the dynamics of the game in that uh, the Romans now know that they've got a real fight on. And what the Britons have done uh, by deploying over here and pulling the Romans onto them has positioned themselves so they've got a very large force to the front and nearly the flank of the Romans, which means the Romans have got to really use their cavalry and their slingers to protect the flanks of the legion and hope that the legion can take on the Britons and gain a victory in that area. So let's crack on. Uh, next card out is Streptococcus himself. And... He has got three fervor on one group and four on the other, but he's going to try and raise it even further. He adds two to both groups. Well, interestingly, this group's up to six and this group is up to five. And I say interestingly because on a roll of a six, one group will now randomly gain an additional point of fervor. And if it's the group that's already got six, their fervor will crash back down. That's the word. Their fervor will crash back down to one. So, fortunately, one, or, one, two, or three, this group here, take it. So they are at maximum fervor. Now he's got some decisions to make because that is a great position to be in. Go uh, maximum fervor, his boats are really psyched up. Um, he can't move now, but when he's next activated, 
if he does if he decides not to move that fur will start seeping away start going down and falling and that is not what he wants so he's kind of got himself into a position whereby his force are ready to attack but is he uh, Roman Signa card is the next one out followed by Roman Leader 2 now that's our Optio he's got nothing to do is there anything the Romans want to do? I mean, they can use, they've got a load of Signa cards out and they can use them to do drill, but they can't really use them to do anything else. Right, leader four is the Roman Slingers. Well, they are neatly over there, but the problem they've got is that those cavalry are within two inches of uh, the Britons. No, they're not, they can't be, because the Britons can't deploy within four inches of them. So they must be four inches away. So they're going to throw rocks at them. They've only got one point of fervor on, so what they're going to do is um, darken the skies with two signa in the hope of adding hits and reducing that fervor down. It's a good thing they did. Two fours, two fives. That works really well. So the unit that is at the end takes a point of shock. The unit next to them, no effect. And uh, that one again, because it's on the two groups that are next to each other, that's another point of shock. So there's further being reduced on those two units, which are not good for the Britons. So let's, our uh, last card must be Tempest Fugit. Let's give that deck a good shuffle and we can start again. Okay, so let's play the cards. First card out is a blue Signa card. Second card out, blue Signa. Third card out is Red Leader 3. Now, Red Leader 3 is our cavalry unit over there. And I think what they're going to do in the face of that is... Well, they've got two choices, but I think realistically they're going to take one for the team. They've got a choice, actually. Well, it's a difficult decision to make either way. Now, they could charge in and try and do a bit of damage to those barbarians which would allow time for their main body to hopefully go in and sort out the uh, main uh, British nobility but at the same time if they get defeated then there's nothing there covering that flank so should they fall back should they stand there I think at that point in time what they're going to do is they're going to wheel to face and they are going to hope that the Britons accept some form of Mexican standoff there. Um, I think that's a terrible choice, but I'm not sure what the alternative would be. Um, well, we'll leave that and see. Leader, blue four. Blue four is our slingers. Well, the slingers are going to <coughs> throw their rocks at the Roman formation. They do two hits. Had they done on the skies, they'd have done better. Right, let's roll there. Two is nothing, two is nothing, so a big waste of time. Blue two. Now, well, there's me trying to put off that decision what to do with those cavalry. Now the question is what to do with those guys uh, over there. I think the answer is that he's going to use a Signa card and he's going to raise further. So he rolls a, a 5 which becomes a 6. Now that will put two points on everybody and one of those groups will also add a further one point. So the end group are up to 3 and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and it's 2. So if they do attack and they do take on those cavalry any impact is likely to removing fervor rather than actually causing shock and when they do charge in they're likely to get a ferocious, well they will get a ferocious charge unless the Romans can do something to reduce that down. So the barbarians really attempting to get their guys psyched up. Uh, it would have been very easy to go then in then but I think it would have been committing them too early. Blue leader one. Now as we know this guy's got a problem. Uh, so if he stands still, he's going to be, um, his guy's fervour are going to go down. He could 
launch an attack which would go in with 2d6 for each group and then add 6 inches further and then if they fall short potentially uh, reduce that but he's going to move in a controlled manner <laughs> which means that he rolls two dice and takes the lower one off but he still adds further and he has moved directly into contact with those Romans. That was not what he was looking to do, uh, but we can see that the fervour on his men has meant they have gone in. However, the good news is that they've got six fervour on both groups. These are British nobles. Uh, the bad news is that they're up against Legion, who've got supports, and who are in close order. But We'll see what happens because they're going to play, make that into an aggressive attack. And uh, Streptococcus is going to go in there. Now if they, well, let's just see what happens. That's all we can say. So the Romans over here, we're split into two, uh, two groups. Now the Romans over there are going to get eight dice because they're warriors. And then they're going to add two dice because they are drilled and fighting in the open. Then they're going to add three dice for supports. Then they're going to add three dice for the Centurion. Now he could decide to add in additional dice. And I think he's going to risk it and put in an additional two dice. Now that gives them a total of 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 dice. Now he can put up to nine dice in defence, which is what he's going to do, and keep nine dice for attack. And there's his defence dice. Streptococcus. Well, he's going to get 10 dice because these guys are elite warriors. So let's have a look at that. 3, 6, 9, 10. He's got a ferocious charge. He's also got an aggressive attack. He's also got uh, another 3 dice uh, because of six points of fervour and Streptococcus can put in up to six dice. Well he knows the, he knows the Romans are in close formation which means they're not going to be fighting with as many dice as, uh, as they could. So if there's ever a moment to risk it I guess this is it. So Streptococcus is going in with a massive six dice personally. And for his force, that means he's got 12 dice, 16 dice, 21 dice. 21 today, let's see what good it does it. Okay, well, he's got four, five, sixes, and one, two, fives. Now, as we know, uh, Centurion Costco is using nine defensive dice, so we'll roll them and see what he gets. Well, he gets one six, so that cancels out one of those sixes. And he's looking for fives and fours to cancel out shock. And he's rolled one, 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 two, two, three, three, three. That is not what he wanted. However, uh, he's got nine dice coming back. Let's see what he does with them. So fighting back, he does two sixes and a five. So the Romans have got a lot to deal with here. So they've got four sixes where they're going to have to roll to see if they get their armour saves. They only save one. So that's three hits. And as we know, Costco went in with an additional two dice. So if he rolls a one, two, three or four, he's the guy who's wounded. And it is Centurion Costco. And he rolls a four, which means he's down to leader one. So that does mean that three, uh, two more legionaries die. They've lost by three. And uh, they take five points of shock in total. Now that's a bad blow for the legion. It's interesting, after the first game against the uh, Germans, several people said, can the barbarians win? Well... We're seeing it now. Streptococcus has gone in with his elites and even allowing for the Romans in their fabulous close order defensive formation, throwing all those dice to cancel things out and throwing 
um, four, five, and six to save on the armour. There's a real hole in that defensive position now. Um, and so what we're going to do for the nobles is roll their two dice. They save on five and six. They've got one save. So that's one man dead. Streptococcus went uh, large. If he rolls one, two, or three, and he does, Streptococcus is wounded, and he's rolled a six. So he has gone down a level as well which means they don't lose anybody, but they are winning in that fight, and I'm going to put this magic marker next to them to indicate that they are winning in that fight. Um, the Romans there lost by two or more, because they suffered uh, three kills to the British at one, which means they have to go back one inch for every point of shock on that group, and they go back three inches. We have an option there that the Optio can play his magic role, which is to hold a formation in place even when it's ordered to fall back. So that's what we're going to do. And that Optio is stepping in and doing that, and that allows both those groups to also rally off a point of shock because he is having that effect from the rear. That's something he can do once in a game and have it happen automatically. That's important because it maintains that formation, which means that the support thing is, um, uh, the flank is covered for them. So uh, that's a, um, a big situation there because we've got a couple of um, morale tests. So uh, the warriors are pushed back uh, in close combat. So we roll the dice with the Romans there and they roll a two, which is no effect. However, more importantly, Centurion being wounded they roll a five and that's going to be two off so their force morale is right down there to eight points but the same thing coming back streptococcus he rolls a five and the british force morale also plummets down to eight so that's a big punch and bear in mind what you're seeing there are roman legionaries with supports and these are british nobles without supports so that's a big big hit and shows that the barbarians are not a pushover uh, Let's see what happens in the other half of the fight, because don't forget we've got a second half of that fight to go. Even so, the Barbarians still count as winning in a fight, but they, don't, they didn't get a morale test for pushing them back because they held. Um, so, uh, the Romans here get eight dice, uh, because they are warriors, and uh, they get a further three dice, uh, two dice because they're fighting in, open, in the open. So that takes them up to 10 dice, and they get three dice for supports. Now, the Optio is at the back doing the Optio's job, so that effectively means they can put six dice into defence and seven into attack. So we'll put the six dice there. The Britons here, that again, they're not going to get as much because they don't have Streptococcus with them, but they do get 10 dice because they are elite noble warriors, and they get two dice for a ferocious charge, and they get two dice for an aggressive attack, and they get three dice for having six points of fervor. So let's see what they can do. And they roll well. One, two, three sixes, and three fives. So, a uh, good roll for the Britons, but as we know, we're gonna roll six defensive dice for the Romans, let's see what they can get. Well, they just get one five. That's not good for the Romans. So let's put that to one side. And now we'll roll the seven offensive dice, the seven attack dice for the Romans to see what they can do here. Well, they just get one six. So let's roll the armor on the Barbarians first of all. They save it, they make the save. So the pressure continues. So for the Romans, three armor saves. They save one. Two Romans down on this side as well. And uh, that will be four points of shock because we've got two fives and two of those sixes got through. So pretty simple there. Two and two. Now we have a situation there where that group have lost by two, which means they must fall back two inches, a point for every a pip for every point of shock on the group. 
Now the Optio has used his um, special powers to hold that formation in line and I bet he's wishing he hadn't done that now um, <clears throat> because that group would have fallen back uh, together with the other one. Now he's got a choice here, he can attempt to hold that in position again and if he does so he will rally a point of shock off both those groups and hold everything in place. However, he's only got a 50% chance. And with that being a 2 inch pushback, I think the Romans are going to have to accept the fact that uh, they are going back. Now the Barbarians are there still on 6 points of shock, which is disastrous for the Romans. So really under pressure here. And what's remarkable is that the Britons are doing this without supports and the Romans have got supports. So before anything else happens, we'll fight another round. Um, so we'll go over here and we have got our uh, Romans, uh, uh, Britons, who've got 10 dice because they're elite. So it's eight, nine, 10 dice. They're winning the last round of combat. So we add two dice to that. We'll put that over there because those guys are doing the same to remind us. So that's 10 uh, plus uh, that they've, uh, it's not a ferocious charge now, it's not an aggressive attack, that only happens in the first round, but they've still got four points of fervor, so that adds another two dice. Streptococcus, he's down to status two now. He could put extra in. Difficult decision. I think he's gonna put an extra one dice in and take a chance. So those are the dice there. Now let's work out the Romans. Well, they've got eight dice, because they're warriors. And they are Romans fighting in the open, so that puts it up to 10. And they get three dice for the support, and they get two dice for the Centurion. And he also is going to put an extra dice in to try and bring that up. Now that gives them a total of 18 dice. So they, uh, sorry, no, it doesn't give them a total of 16. So they can put eight in defense and eight in attack, which... I think is what they are going to do. So let's roll for the Barbarians, first of all. Let's roll for the Britons to see what they roll. And that's another stunningly good roll, including one cock dice, which could make it even better if they're lucky. So that was a six. So shut those ones to one side, re-roll that one. It doesn't, but they have got five sixes and one five. So a staggering um, ratio of sixes to fives. So. Our Romans are going to roll their defensive dice. Well, they roll one six and two five. So we'll just take a six off and we'll take that five off. For those. Uh, however, that still leaves a total of four sixes there, which the Romans uh, need to save. And remarkably, they save three of them. So that's one man down. Uh, he put, he put in, in an extra dice, so on a one, the Centurion is hit, and the Centurion's hit again. Costco has been hit again on an implausible roll of one, and he, he, he goes down by one level. We're going to test that force morale immediately so we don't forget that, but that is bad news for the Romans. So let's roll that dice. They've rolled a four. The senior leader, he's still status. Two, remember, but that only goes down one on a roll of a four. But that's very, very bad news. Uh, however, let's roll for the Romans. See if they can pull something back. Because remember, they've still got eight attack dice, which they can use here. And they get two sixes. So we'll roll the armour on the Britons. And they fail to save either of them. Which means the Romans have only lost one man. The Britons have lost two. So that... that Who's winning dice? We're going to put back with the Romans and uh, we'll roll a uh, dice to see if it is Streptococcus and it's not. Wow, so that's going both ways, swinging to and fro. Over here, well, we've got our Britons again. They've got 10 dice because they are elite warriors. And they've still got six points of fervor, so they get an additional three dice for that. And they were winning, so they had two dice for that. So that's a big hand there. Now, what have our Romans got there? Well, they've got ten, uh, eight dice, because they're warriors. They get ten dice because they are... Uh, hold on a minute. We've got to put points of shock on that group there before we go back and forget. So they lost two 
uh, which puts one on the back group and one on the front. So we just, whilst they warm that, we're still seeing their level of shot being pushed up. Right, so back to where we were. So uh, they get uh, 10 dice, uh, but that goes down. At, sorry, they add three for support, but that goes down by one because of the shock. So the Romans there have got 12 dice, so they're going to roll six in defense and six in attack. They're not, they're going to take a chance. They've seen their comrades winning, so they're going to drop that to four defensive dice and up the attacking dice to eight. So let's roll those British dice and see what these guys get in the attack. Well, they roll big. Four sixes and probably, more importantly, four fives. So let's see what the Romans can roll. They've just rolled one six, no fours or fives, so no shock saved. So that's just one off there. So we'll roll for the effect on those Romans. They've got to save. They've made two saves, so they lose one man dead. So that's one man dead and five points of shock, which is a big hit. So we're going to put three on the front group and two on the back group. So their front group there, they've got five men uh, with five points of shock. And the back group have got four points of shock. So that's pretty heavy stuff for them. Dr. Cockers there has got 10 dice and they've still got four points of fervor so that adds two. Streptococcus adds another two dice. The Romans, well what have they got? Well they've got they're just over half strength so this is a key round. So they get eight dice because they're warriors. They also get two dice for fighting um, in the open. They get two dice for having won the last round of combat. They get one dice for Centurion Costco, but they take one off for having uh, two points of shock. Now, I don't think Costco dare at this point in time to add any dice in. Uh, in fact, they are going to go with a full six dice for defence, and uh, that's the maximum they can put in, 50%, and six dice for attack. So we can see the number of dice both sides are rolling here sort of leeching away because the uh, combat is they're getting tired effectively so the britons there roll one six and three fives what do the romans roll to save it well they roll a four a five and a five and that takes off all three of those shots so that was a good decision going with those defense dice and let's roll the armor save and the romans save on the armor so they've now got six dice to hit back at the britons they roll a six. Let's roll for the British armour. They don't save. So that's another man off. And that further drops to three. So gradually the Roman position, they hope, is stabilising. But they are just one man off with both their front groups being at 50%. So let's go over here now. Fight this half of the fight. The Romans get eight dice. They add two because they're fighting in the open. They add three for supports. And then they take one off for the group fighting, having shock. So they uh, have 12 dice. And the Britons, well, that's going to be 12 dice as well, because they have simply got the 10 dice for being elite, and they've still got five points of fervor. So we'll roll for the Britons first of all, see what they can get. Okay, they roll three sixes and two fives. So great roll on just... Uh, of dice what can the romans do with their six defensive dice well they rolled a six a five and a four well the five and a four will take those two off and the six will take that one off so it's two roman armor saves so that's a man off and their shock goes up to three and fighting back now romans here what are they going to do they've done a six and a five so that's Roll the armor dice for the Britons and they make that save, but they can't save the five. So that goes down to four. So we fight the next round again. So there we are. We really are at tipping point there. The Romans are taking a battering. They are losing men. But on the other side of the coin, 
the Britons are losing that fervour that got them the initial impact, that initial hit. Those big numbers of dice that you saw in the first round of combat are now gradually going away. We're seeing the Romans being reduced to less than 10 dice. Um, and we are really at the crunch point in the battle, which means that is, of course, a good time to take a break and leave you with a cliffhanger so we can come back and see this. I can actually only apologise because we had some filming issues and obviously with the run up to the release, uh, time has been very, very precious. So uh, uh, today has been a very early start to try and get this first part of the Britain's uh, versus Caesarian Romans to you and hopefully it's been interesting and informative and maybe even enjoyable to watch. We will attempt to get part two ready as soon as we can um, but we uh, I'm literally about to leap in a car in the next uh, half hour or so and drive up to Lancashire and then drive back with a car full of uh, tokens and poker chips and then of course it's going to be full-on stuffing envelopes but I wanted to get this to you before we got to that point. Just remember, a couple of days left. We are going to be applying the new American postage rates this coming Sunday, which, whatever the date that is, the 28th, 20, blah, blah, 28th of June, because, frankly, anything after that date is going to be posted after the 1st of July. Uh, so please try and get your advanced orders in uh, before Sunday, if you can, and if you're ordering from the United States. Okay, well, hopefully uh, you've enjoyed that and we'll look forward to getting back to you very soon.